Hey everybody. So, for today's video, probably today and tomorrow, I would love to get it done today, but that's probably not going to happen. So in this video, I am going to show you how to install the fantastic fan. A couple things I want to point out to you before I get going on this install. This is going to be more of a vlog style video. Sometimes I like to do these instead of a straight tutorial because I'd rather you see the experience of how you put something in your Airstream like we did with our air conditioner instead of just a straight tutorial because I think a straight tutorial definitely shows you what to do but doesn't show you some of the stressful moments or the tiring moments or the frustrating moments. So I want to kind of document the whole experience of putting in the fan while showing you how to do it. Obviously there's plenty of tutorial videos out there so I'm trying to make these a little bit different. A couple things I want to point out about the Fantastic Fan before we get going is we like to buy ours from Vintage Trailer Supply. You can buy them from various places but they're all about the same price and we like to support Vintage Trailer Supply. They're a small business that keep so many so 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 many parts that we need for our airstreams and we would be lost without them so we really appreciate vintage trailer supply but the fantastic fan does come in a couple of options it comes with a couple of different roof options you can see this one is somewhat see-through which i kind of like the last time i put one of these in i did not go with this cover because i was afraid the black would look bad on top of the airstream but in hindsight, I wish I would have because I like this letting in a little bit of natural light. The other thing I want to point out is that I highly recommend going with the fan with the rain sensor. It's worth a little bit of extra money if you're traveling and you leave this open during the day for your pets and it's nice out. If it starts raining, it will close automatically, which is really, really nice. It's worth the extra money. It's worth not getting your trailer wet. So definitely add the rain sensor. It's a must have. Okay, so let's get started on the worst part of this, which is taking out the old skylight. Take a couple different scrapers, see which one's working better. It doesn't really matter what tool you use, whatever method you find that helps you scrape this off. Oh my gosh, this is going tremendously faster than the last time. You just need to scrape it enough so that you can see the rivets that you need to drill through. It's not super important to overdo it. Okay, it did not go this well last time. So far, I am I'm real excited right now. Okay, I'm gonna try this bigger scraper. Maybe it's because it's warm outside that this stuff is coming right off, but we are, we're here for it. obviously never fun to work over your head so if you're looking for a project to make your spouse do this is one of those good projects for that that's what my husband is making me do right now now these campers get really hot right easily so if you've got several vent holes where you've got more than one old skylight i recommend just putting in as many fantastic fans as you can oh i forgot something don't just throw this crap on the floor it um will get in your shoes and then all over your stuff should ow god you really should wear goggles um i've got some insulation up here it's kind of itchy but i really hate wearing goggles and it's hot out today but do as i say not as i do and wear a protective eye gear just in case this insulation gets down in your eyes all right that was amazing and very quick so hopefully it goes that quickly for you recommend making sure you have plenty of drill bits there's no reason to stress yourself out just have enough on hand oh my god this is miserable and try to do this when it's not you know 90 degrees out mm. 
This is the worst part of this project. Uh oh, see, we broke our drill bit. That's why you want to have plenty in hand. All right, we got all of our rivets drilled out, or so we think, probably not. Probably gonna have to come back, do some more work. But we're gonna take a knife and we're gonna try to gently scrape and cut a line of the old silicone caulk, whatever it was, probably some sort of caulk, so that we can see if we can loosen the camper. Okay, so right now we're kind of working together. I am prying loose from here. He's prying from the inside. And we're gonna just keep working it loose and see if we need to pop any more rivets. Okay, we're getting really close. He's pushing it from the inside. Just trying to figure out where we're still stuck at. Doing some extra drilling. I'm gonna go back to using this to kind of prop and pop these old, yep, there we go. I think we may be golden. Let's see. All right, do you think you can take it up now? We're basically caught on this one side over here, which is the hardest side to get to because I don't have I don't want you picking up. a rib to sit on. Right here. Right here. No. One, two, three, this way. Nope, not that one. Nope, come this way, please. Nope, one more. All right. Nothing to it, right? Tell the fine people what you decided to work on while I wasn't recording you. I was just cleaning up the, uh, the opening. Uh, just uh, I took the grinder with a, a carbon bit and smoothed it all out, make sure all the rivets were off of there. All right, so we've got the old vent out. We are ready to start installing the new one. The first thing we need to do is the fantastic fan is slightly bigger than the old opening. So what we're gonna do is take the trim piece out of the box that comes separately of the fan we're going to draw our layout of where we're going to be putting the fan because we need to ultimately cut a new hole and make the opening larger to be able to drop the new fan in. So we're going to use this as a template, draw it out, and then we'll be ready to do the next step. Oh. Okay, well this one seems to have been... Okay, well that's good news. We just need to do the four corners then. That's going to make it easy. So I'm just going to square off these corners here. And then we'll cut this out. And we'll be golden. trying to decide which rivets to use. Everybody's gonna say Olympic or... So we're not using the buck rivets because this is a pretty thick material and buck rivets are pretty short so we're afraid this is not gonna work. So we're gonna use a pop rivet and then we're going to seal it off. Um, the sealant is almost the same color as the fan. Yeah, it doesn't matter what color the caulk is because it's on the roof but we're more so worried right now about the size of the flange because we want to make sure that it's not going to just disappear inside the hole so what size rivet did we choose three sixteenths three sixteenths and so we're gonna have to drill our holes just a little bit bigger so i'll be back in just a sec okay i want to admit to you that we came up with a different method so we had marked out all of our holes and drawn them, but the fan was moving around a little bit, and so it wasn't staying very accurate. So now what we've done is re-drilled and just dry fitted with our rivets for now in each location so that we can make sure the fan's not moving around, and then we'll take these out 
caulk and then install it for real. We're gonna do a bead of caulk all the way around and then set the fan down. We recommend this Trem Pro 635. We got it from Vintage Trailer Supply. It is specifically made for aluminum and adhesive to aluminum, so that's why we use this. Don't use anything else or you could have really bad oxidation on your trailer and or it won't adhere and it will just peel off. So we're gonna put this bead of caulk on and then set the fan. We're gonna put a second bead of caulk around the actual fan itself. Now he's getting way too close to the interior. That's probably gonna show through the no, hole. You have that shroud that comes through. But the shroud goes in here. And so we're probably gonna there. have a lot of cleaning to do. All right, let's make sure we've got our hinge side. Put this baby in there. Line up our holes. We're gonna rivet it down, and then of course we're gonna caulk all the way around the outside, and then we'll caulk over our rivet holes as well. So we'll have three layers of sealant by the time we're done. Quick modification that we're making. Um, we try to keep it real on this channel. We've decided we're gonna remove the skylight itself the because the lid, because we're not able to get a nice straight angle for riveting this on. So it just has four screws in there and that's gonna make our life a lot easier and we'll be able to get a straighter angle. So in a real life, story of our life type of moment, um, Marlon is headed to the store because the rivets that we have are a half inch long. My dogs are walking around inside the Airstream like wiggling the whole thing. Anyway, the rivets we had were half inch long and that's too long because it wasn't pinching and getting a tight enough grasp. So we need to try to find quarter inch rivets. It's a Sunday. We think Home Depot has some, so we're off to Home Depot. He's off to Home Depot while I get a tan on the roof of the Airstream and wait for him to come back with the right rivets and we will get back to it. Okay, we are back in business. He ran and got these 3 16 diameter by quarter inch. They came in one little bag with only two pieces. They were expensive, so try to buy in bulk online. But we've got all of our rivets dry fitted here and now we're going to put them on. Okay, I hate this rivet gun, so I'm making him do it. But I'm gonna go inside and push from below so that we can make sure we're getting the skin as tight to the fan as possible. Here's how it works from the back side. The little ball pushes through and widens the rivet. And eventually it breaks off. We are in business, folks. Fantastic fan installed. So now that we've got all the rivets in, he's going to take the caulk and generously apply it around the edges and on top of the holes in the rivets so that we don't get any water damage. Alright, so we've caulked real good around the edge with our Trim Pro. We've put the skylight back on and the fan is now officially installed. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you guys out. If nothing else, it showed you the actual experience of putting in the fan and the problems that come along with it. And we hope that you join us for more of our tutorials. Like, subscribe, and feel free to email us any of your questions.